السلام علیکم پروگرام سوشل ریویو کے ساتھ میں ہوں آپ کی میزبان ایمن منظور اپنے آج کے اس پروگرام میں ایک مرتبہ پھر ہم بات کریں گے امیگریشن کے مسائل کے حوالے سے اور یہ جاننے کی کوشش کریں گے کہ آخر کیوں بائیڈن انتظامیہ بھی امیگریشن کے ان مسائل کو حل کرنے میں ناکام رہی ہے جو اس سے پہلے کی انتظامیہ میں لوگوں کو درپیش تھے امریکہ میں بہت سے ایسے لوگ موجود ہیں جو طویل عرصے سے یہاں رہائش اختیار کیے ہوئے ہیں لیکن وہ اپنے فیملی ممبرز کو ابھی تک امریکہ نہیں بلا سکے اور انہی تمام وجوہات کی بنا پر امیگریشن کے مسائل سے دو چار لوگوں کے ذہنوں میں بہت سے ایسے سوالات موجود ہیں جن کے جوابات یا مشوروں کے لیے ہم اپنے پروگرام میں امیگریشن اٹرنی جونتھن افتالین کو مدعو کرتے ہیں گزشتہ دو ڈھائی سالوں میں کووڈ کے باعث کیسز مزید تاخیر کا شکار ہوئے اور لوگوں کی پریشانی میں اضافہ ہوا اس کے علاوہ کچھ ایسی وجوہات بن جاتی ہیں کہ جن لوگوں کے کیسز فائل ہوتے ہیں انہیں حکومت کی طرف سے تاخیر کا سامنا رہتا ہے اور ساتھ ہی انہیں یہ بھی خوف ہوتا ہے کہ تاخیر کے سبب اگر وہ گورنمنٹ کو سو کریں گے تو ان کے لیے شاید مزید مسائل جنم لیں گے انہی تمام تر موضوعات سے متعلق سوالات کے جوابات کے لیے ایک بار پھر ہم نے اپنے پروگرام میں مدعو کیا ہے امیگریشن اٹرنی جونتھن افتالین کو جن سے گفتگو کا آغاز کریں گے لیکن ایک بریک کے بعد اقوام عالم میں کیا ہو رہا ہے کون چوکے اور چھکے لگا رہا ہے دنیا میں طب اور انفارمیشن ٹیکنالوجی میں کیا تحقیقات ہو رہی ہیں لالی ووڈ بالی ووڈ اور ہالی ووڈ کی فلم نگریوں کی داستان فیشن میں کیا ان ہے اور کیا ہے آؤٹ یہ سب جاننے کے لیے وزٹ کیجیے ہماری ویب سائٹ ووسا ڈاٹ ٹی وی آپ ہمیں یوٹیوب فیس بک انسٹاگرام اور ٹویٹر پر بھی فالو کر سکتے ہیں ہر خبر سے باخبر رہنے کے لیے دیکھتے رہیں ووسا ٹی وی ویلکم بیک ناظرین پروگرام میں ایک بار پھر آپ کو خوش آمدید کہیں گے جونتھن ہمارے ساتھ پروگرام میں موجود ہیں تھینک یو جونتھن ونس اگین فار یور ٹائم ٹو جوائن اس ان اے شو جونتھن از دیر اینی تھنگ دی ایپلیکنٹس ڈو اف دی گورنمنٹ از ڈیلنگ ہز اور ہر کیس یس دیر از لاٹ دیٹ یو کین ڈو سو اف اف یو ہیو اے اف یو ہیو اے ڈیلے ان یور اسائلم کیس اور ان اے فیملی پٹیشن If the delay is unreasonable, with right now is about a year or more, then you could actually sue the government and force them to make a decision on your case. What should be the procedure to sue the government? So the procedure is a little different depending on the type of delay, but um, it's called a writ of mandamus, and it's a complaint that, that an attorney would file on your behalf to sue the U.S. government for not doing their job. Basically, the U.S. government has a duty to you once you pay for the application, once you submit the application, even if it's a free application like an asylum application. Once you submit the application, they have a duty to adjudicate and process and, and make a decision on the application in a reasonable amount of time. So right now, there are individuals who have been waiting four, five, six, seven, eight years for their asylum applications. There's people who have been waiting overseas to bring their family members, whether it's their father, their mother, their, their son, their daughter, their husband, their wife. And they've been waiting many years for these petitions to be approved and, and process. So in these cases, um, an attorney can file a lawsuit on your behalf to force the government to to issue a decision on your case we heard about your law firm is going to file the lawsuit in the favor of those people who are suffering filing their asylum application can you tell us more about something how the other people can join you sure so yes that's that's true our firm right now is is gathering individuals who have had at least a three-year delay uh since since um any time before or, or three to four year delay or more um and and basically what we're doing is we're suing the government and we're saying that this is not fair that that people since the first in and first out policy has come into play everyone who's filed their applications before that have been prejudiced they've been hurt they've been harmed because if the government is only uh processing the asylum applications of people who come in now what happens to everyone else who's been waiting A lot of these people, they have family members that are overseas that they haven't seen in many years. They want their family members to join or they want to go visit their family members. 
um, or they just want to have their lives set here in the United States. They want to have the comfort where where they they have a work authorization, they have a, per, a work permit, and they also have a green card application and a path to U.S. citizenship. So what my firm is going to do is we're going to fight for these people who who are tired of waiting. And we're going to force the government to um, schedule interviews for for people for their asylum hearings. Some of the applicants are scared by the government. If they are going to file the sue of something, then they are going to be more delay and more complicated things for them. Or more delay, what should they do in this case? So people ask me about this question all the time, and it's a big concern for people. Um, people are scared to sue the government because they think if they sue the government, the government's going to retaliate against them, that the government's going to negatively um, uh, process their case, or they're going to deny their case, or they're going to further delay their case. Okay? And that's not, that's, that's not true at all. Okay? When you sue the government, it actually forces them to do their job. And a lot of the times, they do their job and they process the case quickly, and they approve the case, because they don't want to deal with the lawsuit. When attorneys know what they're doing and they already filed a lawsuit and were in front of a judge, then, then it's hard for the government to explain the delay that they have to the judge. So they know they're going to lose the case and they, 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 they process the case a lot of the times with the approval. Um, filing a lawsuit against the government does not hurt your case in any way. It, it only helps your case. And, and you shouldn't be scared of filing um, a lawsuit against the government for any reason. Like, they're not going to further delay your case. They'll move it faster. And they're not going to deny your case because you filed for the lawsuit. If anything, they'll look for ways to help you approve it. What is the Biden administration is doing to catch up the delay cases because of the COVID? Um, so the Biden administration is starting to do a little bit but still not enough, which is why um, a lot of the lawsuits against the government has been working because these delays have, have uh, continued. Um, what he did do very recently is he filed, uh, he, he approved people to extend their work authorization documents. So if you are currently an asylum seeker and you have work authorization and you file for your renewal, that takes a certain amount of time for them to process. Even though it takes eight to 10 minutes for them to actually review your work authorization and approve it, um, these have been taking a delay of 14 to 18 months just for you to get another work authorization document to show your employer. So Biden saw that this was happening and he saw that this wasn't fair. So recently, earlier this month, at the beginning of May, he, um, he allowed a 540-day extension automatically to every single person who has a work authorization document and is an asylum seeker. So if my document was about to expire and I have proof that I filed a new one, then automatically the employer can keep me on for another 540 days, which gives the U.S. government enough time, no matter how long they're going to delay, they're not going to delay it by two years. And even if they do, then, then they'll do something from there. But basically, Biden gave a two-year extension of any work authorization document to help keep people employed while they're waiting uh, for their interviews. What does the Biden say about the delay application? For example, if someone wants to bring their family from overseas to U.S.? Um, the Biden administration has been very similar to the Trump administration in terms of um, cases have been very delayed for processing through the National Visa Center and through the embassies overseas. They're still trying to blame COVID. They're tr still trying to say that there are these backlogs. However, when, when we sue the government, um, there's a period called discovery, where when we get to that point, the government has to give us certain statistics. They have to give us certain, uh, certain documents that prove their statistics. And what we've seen is that they have, the capaci they have the capacity to process these cases, but they haven't been doing that. So 
So I'm not sure exactly why the Biden administration is so slow in processing these uh, family visas, but, but in our practice, we've seen that the best results is when you sue the government and you force them to make decisions on the family petition cases. Jonathan says, Sawalat ka silsila jari hai, lekin yaha wakt hua ek break ka hamari saath rahi hai. Sansani ke shor mein, musadde ka khabron ki pehchan. Vosa TV, ab ek kadam aur aage. Halate hazra, khabre aur tabsare, ab sirf ek click ki duri par. अपने स्मार्टफोन और दूसरे गैजेट्स एंड्रॉइड या आईओएस के लिए डाउनलोड कीजिए वोसा टीवी की एप्लीकेशन या अमेजॉन स्टिक और रोको टीवी पर देखिए 24/7 वोसा टीवी की नशरियात हर खबर से बाखबर रहने के लिए देखते रहें वोसा टीवी वेलकम बैक Jonathan, what is the actual time takes to bring your spouse from overseas to U.S.? And in these days, applications are getting delays too. So what's the actual time you can bring your spouse to U.S. from overseas? Can you tell something more about it? Sure, sure. So there, right now, it's, a, it's taking about 8 to 10 months, um, maybe even more. I would say 10 to 14 months to process the I-130 petition, which is the petition that, that the spouse or parent would file here to bring their family member over, okay? Once that's approved, then the case goes to the National Visa Center. And the National Visa Center processing and scheduling at the embassy, it depends on the processing time as at each embassy. But we've been seeing right now that it's been taking over a year. Um, to process the cases at the embassy. So you're looking at about one year here, about another year there, and that's like the, the fastest. So, so it's taking, without litigation, without lawsuits against the government, it, it would take about two to three years to, to get people over. Now, if you, if you sue the government and you force them to move faster on your case, you could do it in about a year and a half. So it means the only way to bring your spouse here on time is to sue the government. Well, it depends. Like everything is so backlogged. So, so right now, if anything is taking over a year, you have a right to sue them. Okay, I would say about a year is 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 the is a good time. So there is no any other way to expedite this application. Uh, there are. There's limited ways to expedite, and. Um, the expediting of the I-130 here and even the embassy delay, you, you could do it if you're, if you're a relative of a military uh, officer here, like if, if, you, if your spouse or parent or child works in the U.S. military, or if you are in very, very, very horrible conditions at home, like if you're in war-type conditions or if you have health-type issues, that, that uh, God forbid something would happen to you, you don't have access to adequate health care at home, and then, and then you could show these documents to the, to, the, um, to the government. So there are ways to do embassy expedites. Um, on this level, the I-130 expedites, they're a lot rarer, um, but, but once the I-130 is approved, then when it goes to the embassy, there are certain ways to do National Visa Center, NVC type expedites. They're just very rarely granted. Can you explain to our viewers about the special or extraordinary skilled visa? Sure. So there's an extraordinary ability visa, which is, which is called the O visa. And that allows people of extraordinary abilities um, to, to obtain visas to enter the United States. This can be in terms of entertainment. It could be actors, actresses, singers. Um, it could also be in terms of doctors um, or, or engineers um, or, or individuals of that nature. So basically what you would do is you would show the U.S. government that you have this expertise. You, you, you give them a copy of your CV. You, they see where you went to school, where you got your master's degree, your level of education. And then they see your level of experience in that. 
In addition to that, you have to show that you are extraordinary, which means that you have to show certificates of, of distinction. You have to show honors. You have to show awards, publications, if, you, if you've written publications. If you're an actor or actress, like uh, movies or plays that you've acted in, um, and then what you plan on doing when you're here. Um, and then the hiring company here gives the U.S. government an overview of that person's position. This is going to be how much they're going to make. This is the prevail prevailing wage in their industry. Let's say it's an actor in a play. They're going to be in this play at this time for this many weeks moving forward. So you give the U.S. government as much evidence as you possibly can to show that you are this person that only this company can hire based on your abilities. Um, and that's basically an overview of the process. Jonathan, too many people have submitted the application for the asylum because of the COVID. Too many people's work authorization is already expired and they are waiting to renewal things. There is so many rumors for expediting the work authorization. You have to pay some extra fee to the government. Is that true? And what should be the procedure to expedite your work permit application for renewal? Well, I don't the the answer to that question is the work permit, the work authorization is now automatically renewed. There's nothing else that you need to submit. Um, as long as you show that your application was submitted, you, you just you pay the same amount that you normally would, you do the same exact application. Even though you don't get a response from the US government approving your employment authorization document, you are automatically extended 540 days until they give you a response. So if my work authorization is going to expire next week and I file my, my renewal today, even if the US government does not give me a response this entire year of my approval of my renewed work authorization, I am automatically extended 540 days um, for, for my work authorization. So I could go back to my employer and I could tell my employer, I could show them the law and I could say, look, I don't have a new document that says I'm approved to work, but I have this old document that said I was approved to work. Here's proof that I sent in the new one. And here is the law that says that I'm automatically extended 540 days so that my employer cannot fire me or, or, or is scared to keep me hired because I don't have the actual approval notice from the government. Jonathan, my last question is, if someone came in U.S. on student visa, is he able to file the asylum application? Yes. So anyone who's presently in the United States, no matter how you got here, you could have gotten here on a student visa, you could have gotten here on a visitor visa, you could have illegally crossed the border. As long as you are in the United States and you have a fear of returning back home, um, due to any persecution that, that may happen to you personally because of your race, because of the country you were born in, because of a specific group that you were in, um, because of your gender, or because of your religion. As long as you're being persecuted for one of those five things and you're scared of going back home or else you would have harm, you could file asylum in the United States. Um, there are specific laws as to when you can file asylum. So you have to file your asylum claim within one year of being in the United States. If you came here on a student visa and you were a student for several years and then you want to file your asylum case, you have to have a good reason to overcome the fact that you did not file your case within a year. A lot can happen. You could come here into the United States and uh, you could be studying and let's say your country like Ukraine is under war. Your country was not under war before you came here. So, so you could have been here for two years already, but now you're scared of going back. So that's a good reason for the US government to file after the one year deadline. So it would have to be something like that. If you're already here and what causes you fear to go back to home happened while you were here 
and you file your asylum case within a reasonable time of that fear being created, then you're okay filing your asylum case. Of course, it's more complicated because you're filing after the one year. So you should definitely reach out to an attorney to do that case for you. But, but it's definitely possible to do that. बहुत शुक्रिया जोनाथन आपके वक्त का इमिग्रेशन के मसाइल से दो चार लोगों के सवाल के जवाब हमने आज इस प्रोग्राम में हासिल करने की कोशिश की लेकिन अगर आप भी इन्हीं मसाइल से दो चार हैं और इनके हल के लिए कुछ मालूम हासिल करना चाहते हैं तो आप अपने स्क्रीन पर दिए गए नंबर पर इमिग्रेशन अटर्नी जोनाथन अफ्तालन से रबता कर सकते हैं और इमिग्रेशन से मुतल मसाइल हल करवा सकते हैं आज के इस प्रोग्राम के लिए इतना ही अगले हफ्ते एक और मौजू के साथ हाजिर होंगे प्रोग्राम टीम के साथ एमन मंजूर को इजाज़त दीजिए अल्लाह हाफिज़